Ito Terlahi appeared to have thrown in the towel. I am tired of the so many amendments. I am tired. This, this interaction is turning into a circus already. Vowing a comeback, that's exactly what he did on session floor this afternoon. The Democrat lawmaker stepped back into the ring, ready to fight for Bill 363, another measure to once again give choice. And this is the same bill with uh, the one that was withdrawn. But Bill 363 didn't stand a chance as Senator Therese Terlahi delivered the TKO. Because the bill is not identical to the bill that had a public hearing. And this, this statute specifically requires that it be identical to the bill that had a public hearing. Senator Pito Terlahi bowed out with Bill 363, but came back with another punch with Bill 366. While Senator Therese Terlahi responded with another jab, she was out for the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries. Senators have been debating the issue on whether to give choice back to GovGuam employees and retirees for more than a week. But even prior to session, retirees and GovGuam employees have been asking for choice. The Mayor's Council of Guam months ago passed a resolution urging the legislature to restore their right to select from multiple health insurance carriers. And just this morning on our interactive radio show on I-94 FM, retiree, former member of the Government of Guam Health Insurance Negotiations team, Joseph Cameron, stepped into the ring after sitting on the sidelines watching session. The people of Guam are really concerned as a general. I mean, you know, just because you're a Gulf Guam employee doesn't mean you're a Gulf Guam employee. Come on, you got kids who work in private mm -hmm. sector, for God's mm -hmm. sakes, and they're affected as well. So, you know what? I think we got to go back to basics. Give the choice issue back, give it back. Come on. You know, there, there's no exclusivity uh, provider that we're looking for. We're not looking for anything other than what is rightfully our choice. It's a moral issue to me uh, to be able to, to, to make such a decision on behalf of my family my, and everybody else that's couching on this. Once Bill 366 was added on to session agenda, senators did not immediately go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the bill, instead moving on with the rest of their agenda. Traditional healing group the Hatsa Foundation comments about local healer Co San Nicholas's recent arrest on criminal sexual conduct charges. Zita Pangalinen said San Nicholas is not a member of Hatsa, and she adds the news has the entire local healing community shook. In an emotional interview on KUAM's containing COVID this morning, Pangalinen addressed publicly for the first time since Nan San Nicholas's arrest. Painful thing to hear. We are. It's painful to hear of the women who are, you know, um, who had the courage to, I'm grateful for the courage that they've come forward. It's painful to hear about Ko, because we know Ko, and all the families involved, you know. We hurt each time, and every time we hear of this, um, it's painful for all of us. Pangalinen encouraged people to pray for all involved, and she adds that people are still seeking the services of traditional healers. The calls haven't stopped. I mean, uh, more than ever, like, we're getting more calls. So um, everyone's human. Everyone makes mistakes, and I'm not minimizing this at all, but that um, whoever... You know, um, we're all hurt, and that's why I said we're all hurt by this, and especially, you know, just trying to revitalize, and this happens, but it must have happened for a reason, and um, to test our resolve too, right? Because yeah. it, it's a heavy load. The Guam Police Department said alleged victims sought out San Nicholas for his traditional healing knowledge. San Nicholas is also a port police officer. He appeared for a detention hearing this afternoon, and over the government's objection, the court ordered his pretrial release to a third-party custodian. The Office of the Attorney General stating, quote, the court, not the OAG, ultimately decides whether a defendant should be held pending trial, unquote. His next court appearance was set for June 12th. On Sunday, June 7th, at around 7 p.m., GPD officers responded to a stabbing complaint at the Hemlani's commercial apartments in Tamuning. According to reports earlier that afternoon, the victim 
was with a group of men by the new plaza market while there, while there an altercation occurred with the victim and one of the individuals resulting in the victim being stabbed in his back area. He proceeded home and his wife notified police he was transported to Guam Memorial Hospital where he is listed in stable condition. This case is ongoing and has been forwarded to GPD's Criminal Investigation Division for follow-up. Police are asking for the public's health relative to a robbery that occurred on the evening of Saturday, June 6. Officers responded to the Zonia Mobile gas station after an unknown man entered and demanded money from the register while brandishing a knife. Fearful for her safety, the store employee complied and handed an unknown amount of cash from the register. The male suspect was seen fleeing on, fleeing on foot on Artemio A. Cruz Street towards the Gura housing area. The male suspect was described as a heavy set local standing 5'5 and was last seen wearing a black backpack, gray hooded jacket, black pants with a black mask covering his face. If you have any information, you are encouraged to call GPD at 472 8911. You can also submit a tip anonymous, anonymously at Guam Crime Stoppers Web. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching 3 a.m. Happy day. I'm Bernie Valencia with Matson. Our local Matson team understands that these are very trying times for everyone. Matson's top priority, like yours, is to keep our family safe and healthy and ensure you have what you need. We'd like to give you peace of mind that Matson's service continues on schedule and uninterrupted. Matson is committed to our weekly service from the United States West Coast to Honolulu into Guam and Saipan. We are working with the Port Authority of Guam and providing the capacity and services our customers need so they can continue to meet your needs. Matson will take all appropriate measures to ensure continuity of service into Guam and Saipan. When we work together to take care of our family and neighbors, we will emerge from this as a stronger island community. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Port Authority of Guam, KOAM Communications, and Matson. During these uncertain times, it's important to remember that we are in this together. The Cowell's insurance team has continued to service the needs of our customers. As in the past 80 years, you can count on us to be here when you need us most, when it comes to your health and the health of your family. Let's continue making the right choices by staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy. We are all in this together, and together we will rise again. Gather round the cravings pack from Taco Bell. Four crunchy tacos and four beefy five-layer burritos paired perfectly with all your Taco Bell favorites. So grab a cravings pack for your crew at Taco Bell's contactless drive-thru. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. Ruby Tuesday Guam is still preparing the dishes you love for either curbside carryout or delivery. Call them at 647-7828 or 647-7829 for curbside carryout service with a smile. For delivery, download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get Ruby Tuesdays delivered to your door. Stay safe and healthy, Guam. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. As the region sets target dates for reopening tourism, there are growing concerns for quarantine protocols across the Marianas. On Saipan, our Tomas Manglotnia got a behind-the-scenes look at the front lines for inbound passengers. This is um, a unified uh, frontline effort. Behind the scenes of the front line, media was on site at the Saipan International Airport early Saturday as United Airlines touched down. Special Assistant for Public Transportation Alfreda Camacho says it's a multi-agency approach. We were all fitted with our proper PPEs um, and to make sure that we conduct this process safely, smoothly and uh, to help protect the community. Buses lined the Westgate entrance and tarmac at 7 a.m. 
Once the plane landed, passengers were escorted to their vans, their luggage loaded onto separate vehicles. Dakota buses transport people at least three times a week from the airport. This morning, they're expecting to transport at least 60 passengers to the quarantine facility. A police escort brings them to the Pacific Islands Club for preliminary screening. Deputy PIO for Department of Fire and EMS, Robert Mojica. They'll be going through a five-day mandatory quarantine. And I believe after the five-day mandatory quarantine, they have the they can have the option of being tested. And uh, once their test results come back, and if everybody comes back negative, they will, I believe, be released. The staff goes through a careful decontamination process immediately after. The vans are also cleaned at the Kanoa Alternate Care Site. This is why we're out here. We take the precautionary measures to make sure that we're safe for all of you. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. The Aganya Police Precinct is becoming the new Department of Corrections Parole Division headquarters. Earlier this year, the Guam Police Department moved out and into their new central precinct with the building transferred under DOC's ownership. According to Major Anton Uggen, renovations are underway and they plan to open the office doors in the coming two weeks. Unfortunately for us, the labor is free. Uh, the labor is all free. All inmates are the ones uh, doing it. We have several officers down there. It'll probably cost us in the neighborhood of three to five thousand uh, dollars. A lot of the resources has to do with just uh, materials. Additionally, there will be a small section of the building designated for attorney-client visitations. According to again, they are converting the former GPD rooms into conference rooms. It should help out with our operations. Uh, you know, it should improve the attorney, like I said, giving them the privacy they need to meet their clients. Uh, having parole in the front of the again uh, the jail there down there in the detention facility. Uh, now we'll have more officers in that area as far as the parole staff. I mean, already parole is in again, yeah, but they're over at the sale right now. And so moving them over to our facility, we just have uh, a little bit more security. Ogin says they are also in discussions with the Superior Court of Guam to create a video conference room for court proceedings beyond the magistrate's hearings. Father Ron Richards will be serving temporarily as the Episcopal Vicar of the Archdiocese of Agana as Archbishop Michael Burns takes an extended leave of absence starting today. The Archbishop will be traveling off island to undergo hip surgery following, followed by recuperation and physical rehabilitation. He is expected to be off island for several months. Father Richards will be assisted by Father Mike Chrysostomo, Vicar for Clergy, along with other priests and members of the Curia. Father Jeff San Nicolas, Vicar General, also remains on leave at this time. Guam Democrats cast their votes this weekend for presidential nominees and representatives for the 2020 Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee in August. Former Vice President Joe Biden received 270 votes or 70 percent, and Senator Bernie Sanders received 188 vo votes or 30 percent. Sarah Thomas Nedadog was elected state party chair. The Biden delegates are Kathy Flores, Speaker Tina Barnes, Senator Regine Bisco Lee, Michael Weekly, Clifford Guzman, and Beverly Borja. The Sanders delegates are Julian Jansen, Ricky Orsini, and Tony Azios. In their teal caps and gowns, the Dolphins made their way onto the graduation stage this afternoon. It was the third public high school grad and go ceremony. KUAM joined in the celebration. Even though this wasn't a traditional uh, graduation, I still feel all the celebration, all of the hard work has paid off and a lot of it comes down to just being here and, you know, being here, it makes it a lot more memorable than what it wouldn't be without it. Before swimming away from his school, Jermaine Gamboa unites with his Southern High Dolphins for a joyous graduation ceremony. I'm really happy how it turned out. I'm so happy that we actually got to graduate, in, at least at our school. It was great, finally uh, receiving the diploma and uh, after how many uh, months that went by, uh, the ups and downs, but we're very grateful for everybody that got the diploma. And, Graduated. Receiving a diploma for all their hard work and dedication. SHS seniors' accomplishments were recognized with a grad and go drive through ceremony on the campus grounds. Sisters Valray J. Mansipit and Jaden Rose Cruz Mansipit took the stage together, with their parents together outside the sunroof snapping photos of their graduating seniors. It's really nice because I get to see my friends still, even though during this pandemic. And what about the support from your parents right here? I gotta say, their setup is so nice. They're out the window. Yeah. Photos. Yeah, we really appreciate their support throughout this all, and I'm glad that they're here. Another close pod were able to reconnect since the pandemic entered our shores, and after years together in the JROTC program, 
These three will be swimming off island, going their separate ways, but say they plan to return back home. I'm headed to uh, Fort Sill in Oklahoma. Fort Bending, Georgia. He's heading to, these three are heading to Fort Bending, Georgia. I'm looking forward to serving my country and my island. In the middle of a pandemic, Gamboa and the rest of his class are diving fearlessly forward with grateful hearts. First of all, I want to say thank you to all the admin and the staff and the faculty that helped put this together. I was here throughout the whole process, seeing all of them put in the hard work to make all of this happen and seeing the outcome, it was great. And my feelings about this is like, wow, even though uh, COVID uh, had happened tragically, it still made it worth the while to still be able to say we graduated this year. Way to go, Dolphins. And coming up, we continue to celebrate the class of 2020. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more, mix and match data paths. Take your data further. In this time of change, there is one thing we can do together. Respond to the 2020 Census of Guam. Every response will help Guam get the resources we need for health care, education, emergency services, infrastructure, and so much more. These resources are critical to the growth of our island for the next 10 years and beyond. We cannot do it alone, but together we can make a difference. Let's start now. Your health and safety is our business. Protect your employees and customers with APEC Professional Services. Our certified team uses EPA registered disinfectants and CDC approved procedures, proven to aid in the fight against coronavirus and other harmful microorganisms. Prevent reinfection through disinfection. Call our office at 477-7310 or our 24-hour rapid response hotline at 858-2852. Keep Guam safe with APEC Professional Disinfection Services. Welcome back. We continue to show our support to the entire class of 2020 in a special user-generated segment with submissions from their loved ones. All right, everyone. It's time once again to celebrate our Head of the Class 2020. And as always, this segment is brought to you by Guam Community College. Starting things off with a couple Southern High graduates. First up, Kaylee Wright. Congratulations, Kaylee. 
We are so proud of you. Love, Auntie Shelly, TJ, and Ty. And another dolphin, Jaylene Pinaula. Congratulations, Jaylene. Love, Auntie Shelly, TJ, and Ty. And heading on up to FD, Kyle Halehale. Hale. Congratulations. We are proud of all of your accomplishments and wish you good luck and success in your next chapter of life. With all our love, Mom, Dad, Sean, and Leah. And a couple twins graduating from FD, Devin Lawrence Ogo Lamb and Donovan Nicholas Ogo Lamb. Keep reaching for the stars and wear sunscreen. We love you. Love the family. Heading over to JFK for our next graduate, Tanya Tia Tahadzi Rivera. Congratulations. We love you from your Rivera family and Dave. And a big congratulations going out to George Washington High School's Marcelina Rose Danleg Pangalina. Congratulations coming from the entire family. And last but not least, Stephen Luhan Shimizu graduating from FD. Congratulations, Stevie, from your Shimizu family. We are proud of you. And I think it's safe to say that we are all proud of every one of the graduates of this year. So head of the class 2020 brought to you by Guam Community College. You can watch more submissions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on KUAM News. And coming up, your birthday shout-outs. Keep it here. Gather round. The cravings pack from Taco Bell. Four crunchy tacos and four beefy five-layer burritos paired perfectly with all your Taco Bell favorites. So grab a cravings pack for your crew at Taco Bell's contactless drive through to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. All right, everybody, happy birthday to Wayne Villa Gomez from his daughters, Shayna, Shailene, and Sharon, grandkids Zariah, Ricky Boy, and the Grands. Love you, Dad, and love you, Grandpa. Happy birthday, number 15, to Charles Santos, love Grandma Cruz, and the family. Also, happy birthday to Jerry Tyron with many more to come. We love you, Mom, and the entire family. And happy birthday to two of KUM's value team members, Chris and Christine Mesa. Happy birthday to Bubba and Tim Tim, because here at KUM, we are all about nicknames. We hope you guys have a fantastic day. And belated birthday wishes going out on Born on June 6th to Josie Ponte. Happy birthday. We love you. Our Josie also celebrates a birthday on 6-6. We love you and happy birthday, your friends say. Michael Chagalov Guerrero, also born on the 6th. Happy birthday, we love you and wish you all the best from your family and friends, each and every one of them. Thomas Torres was born on the 7th, and happy birthday to Thomas from Talapopo, coming from the Torres and Kitigua clans, especially his grandkids, Leo and Cole. And happy birthday to Charlie and Cruz, who was born on June 3rd. Happy belated 19th special day, and congratulations to Charlie Cruz. This is coming from Grandma Cruz and the family, who all send their love. 
Remember, you can be part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KYM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and be safe. But we wanted to start our discussion uh, this hour by playing this uh, video here. It was posted on uh, McQuinn's uh, Facebook page, and we were able to uh, clean it up, and so we'll go ahead and, and put this out uh, for you guys. This is a video that we've been talking about. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, it racked up a ton of views on uh, Facebook, and uh, basically calling out Guam for clout chasing Black Lives Matter. So let's uh, take a listen and a watch here. What's up, y'all? This is something that I want to rant about real quick. So first off, let me just say, I appreciate everyone on Guam that supports Black Lives Matter and that support the movement with everything going on in the world. But to play devil's advocate, y'all doing the little march and the peaceful protests in the midst of a pandemic, I might add you, I honestly think that it's a reach for attention. I mean, y'all jump on this bandwagon of a trend that you see everyone else in the States doing, but the difference in the states what y'all doing here it's great that you guys are acknowledging that but i think y'all should put your energy that does happen on this island like how you guys treat chukis people i'm not saying all y'all but i'm just saying guam in general they get how the chukis people get treated they get treated a lot like how black people get treated in the states so think about that i know i know some people might get mad at me some people might even unfollow me but I really don't give a because I'm not afraid to speak my mind. And I want to let y'all know that, hey, we appreciate it, like I said, but I can speak for every black person in our community. We can hold our own, okay? We've been doing it for the last couple hundred years. Put that energy towards your two keys brothers and sisters that's here on this island. Yes, racism still happens on Guam. To two keys people especially, y'all treat them like so shouldn't their lives matter too? Of course black lives matter, but Chukis lives matter too. On Guam, what's going on in the States and everywhere else? That ain't none of y'all business. Focus on here. Yup, I said it. Be mad, but y'all know the truth, man. I think y'all clout chasing. Snapchat yeah. mm -hmm. and on my Instagram stories and I said you know what let me just uh, save the video and, uh, and post it to my Facebook I want to say I posted it on Thursday I did the Snapchat originally on Wednesday I was uh, walking out in Tumon and I just I just was thinking about that and I wanted to speak on it what has it been uh, well obviously what <laughs> I think some of that's obvious but what has been uh, the reaction and and what type of uh, new perspective can you add to this now that you've you've done the video because you know a lot of people do videos and sometimes when you just shoot it out there there might be a moment the next day or the day after you're like oh i think about this or i left this out or i would have said this differently so what, what can you tell us on that end you, you, um honestly i didn't even think the video was going to go viral mm -hmm. i didn't think that that was going to happen and for the reactions of uh, the reactions were pretty neutral a lot of people agree, but there were also some people who disagreed. And I wasn't trying to say that, that, um, how do I say this? I wasn't trying to say that what they were doing was wrong or what they were doing was pointless. And you're talking you know, about supporting uh, Black Lives Matter and the, with the protest. Right. 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 It's great that, that people acknowledge it and it's great that, that they support it. But at the same time, I feel like there's also issues going on here that, you know, people should put more energy into. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and I just felt like, go ahead. You still, so you still d feel the same way as uh, even after posting this video as you did when you actually said what you said. Of right? course. Mm -hmm. I still feel the exact when I posted it. You know, when I say anything, I I usually mean what I say, and 
I mean, could there have been some things I, I said differently or interpreted a different way? Yeah. I mean, I probably could have been a, a little more clean about it. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when you're when you're ranching, you don't even think yeah. about it. You just, yeah. you just go for it. So what, what uh, inspired this? Because I know that uh, you were stationed out here. You were out here a few years ago, then you went, uh, and, and now you came back. Was this something that you just saw in uh, living on Guam for a couple years? Yeah, and I, and I just see it happen. I see it happen in general, you know, specifically with two keys people, but I see it with, every, with everyone, you know, and even, even me. You know, I've had people tell me, oh, you're not tomorrow. You're not from this island. Why are you playing the ukulele? And I've, I've had these kind of things happen to me before, but I don't like to, to use that to play victim, you know? But I just acknowledge it that it happens, and I want everyone else to to understand that, hey, Guam isn't perfect either. That there's still some things that we need to fix because I said that because I love it here, and I want this place to, to get better. But you- so we have to... No, I, I, do you, do you, but do you really feel like Guam is clout chasing? To, to some degree, yes. Why do you say that? Now, 